Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to use the AI to analyze the two recent interviews that Lex Friedman did with uh, AI experts. Sam Altman from OpenAI that uh, invented ChatGPT and GPT-4 and Jan Lecon, uh, who is a head of uh, AI research at Meta. And we will be using a tool that I created that's called Infernodus that visualizes uh, YouTube video transcripts as a graph and shows you what are the main concepts inside, how they're related, what are the topics that those people are talking about, but more importantly, what are the gaps in their discourse. So we will analyze what they have to say, how those two interviews compare, and what are the important concepts inside and what is missing. So keep watching if you want to do this with me. So first of all, um, if you don't know Lex Friedman, he interviews a lot of really interesting people, has a long form format interview that lasts about two to four hours. And one interview that we have here is the one that he did with Sam Altman. I think that was uh, six days ago. And another one with uh, Jan Lecon, which is two weeks ago. So it's two very prominent people in the AI field and they talk about really interesting stuff AI related, but let's see how those interviews are different. So here I have a visualization made by Infernodus of the first interview between Lex Friedman and Sam Altman. And just to explain to you how Infernodus works, it visualizes the discourse as a knowledge graph, as a network graph, where the main concepts or terms that people use are shown as nodes, and the co-occurrences of those terms are the connections. So you get a very clear representation of the main ideas inside, and more importantly, how they're related to one another. And we use the AI to interpret those topical clusters, which are identified, so for example, in this interview with the uh, Sam Altman, we see that they have been talking about communication skills, artificial intelligence, machine learning, innovation and technology, and then there were a few more topics like social media, workforce development, and so on. So this is what Sam Altman uh, talked about with uh, Lex Friedman. On the other side, if we take the interview with uh, Jan Lecon, we see that the topics were slightly different. Uh, they were talking about artificial intelligence, obviously, of course, but also, they have a topic on hierarchical learning, so it's kind of like a much more technical interview, it seems like, and Jan Lecun is talking much more about those subjects as well. By the way, I haven't watched uh, both of those interviews yet for the clarity of this experiment, because I just want to use uh, the Infranodos knowledge graph network and uh, AI to tell me what are the main ideas inside and what I should point my attention to when I will be watching those interviews. I find it's much more interesting to watch them like this because then I approach them with uh, the ready-made questions that I have in my mind that relate to my interests and that makes me a more attentive listener. So this is why I like to do it this way. First I analyze the interview, I see if it's interesting, I see what are the main topics I should point my attention to and then I will be watching them. So if you watch those interviews I will also be very curious to know if I guessed right what they were talking about and uh, if all the important subjects were identified correctly as well. You can leave your comments uh, in the video below. So first of all, Sam Altman interview. So we see all those topics on communication skills, artificial intelligence, innovation and technology and machine learning. And the first thing that I like to do is to kind of look at the graph and see like, okay, so they've been talking about people, thing, all these words like yeah, model time. So it's quite a lot of uh, talk about the people who work inside organization, it seems like, and the communication skills and the importance of collaborating with people, right? I can also click this button, AI summarize, and what happens is that Infernodo sends uh, this graph along with the most important um, statements from the transcript to AI, in this case is GPT-4, to generate uh, a summary of what this interview is about. And it's quite short, so it gives me just the gist of the main idea, right? So here they're talking about the impact of new technologies on society and potential power struggles in the road to AGI, which makes sense because uh, OpenAI had this uh, board uh, drama several months ago. So I understand they will be discussing a lot of the politics around building an AI company. And then it says it also touches on the importance of collaboration and AI safety and the use of human data in work. So kind of general topics about how artificial intelligence and AGI uh, work, what kind of challenges you encounter as a company building a product like this. We can also regenerate a few more summaries, see if there's anything else that comes up. 
the way Internalis works is that it's much less verbose than ChatGPT, so you get really kind of like the insights which you can then use to accumulate your own idea about a certain topic, which I think is much more interesting because in this way uh, you're using AI to think with you and not for you. So if you see some uh, statement here that you like, you can actually save it to notes here and then you will be saving ideas that are generated by AI or that you come up uh, just by looking at the graph and uh, then it helps you understand what it's about. So here it's also talking about impact of new technologies on society, collaboration and AI development. So, you know, it's a lot about developing a company and dealing with people. Now let's look at the graph of uh, the conversation that Lex Friedman had with uh, Jan LeCon. And here we see that, okay, they've been talking a lot about hierarchical learning, for instance, and <clears throat> language modeling, which is quite interesting because it seems like it's much more technical, this interview. And this is more interesting for me because I'm interested in the technical aspects more than in the drama behind the product. And here it summarizes it as well. The text discusses the dangers of proprietary AI systems. So that's interesting that the guy from Meta is talking about that. Um, Sam Altman is not talking about that so much. The importance of open source AI empowering human goodness. Okay, that, that's where they connect. The training methods of AI models. This is something that is not so much present in the Sam Altman interview and the necessity of grounding intelligence in reality and the significance of planning and reasoning abilities in dialogue systems. So it seems much more technical. I already know that uh, I'm more interested in this interview because it has more interesting technical details. Here I regenerate the summary to see if anything else comes up. Uh, I think it's kind of the same, so I'm gonna also save it to my project notes to keep this idea in mind, what it's about. By the way, also all this analytics that I generated, I can save it in, into my project notes as well if I click this button. So it auto-generates some kind of summary of the main topics and concepts uh, and saves them into my project notes. And here I'm going to do the same for the Sam Altman interview. Here we go. Save this data. And then let's move on. I want to show you another really powerful way of comparing uh, the two interviews. And for that, we will be using a compare feature in, uh, in Frenodo. So if you click on this button here, and then you see that it proposes you to compare context graphs, and we will see how Sam Altman's interview is different from, so we need to choose this, from the interview with uh, uh, Jan Lekon. So I see this interview, click visualize, and what happens is that Infernodus overlays these two graphs, and it shows you what's present in the interview with uh, Jan Lekon that is not present in the interview with uh, uh, Sam Altman. And it's very interesting, uh, way to look at this information because we're not just comparing the texts and asking which words or concepts are present in one that are not present in another. Because the thing is that when you analyze information and interviews on the same subject, they will probably use the same terms. So this sort of analysis that you would get uh, if you use uh, like a diff software that just shows you what's present in one that's not present in the other, would be very superficial because it would just point to the different vocabulary used. It's still interesting, but it doesn't get to the nuance of the details. And the details, actually, especially when we talk about the same topics, is that it's all about the relationships between the terms and not the terms themselves. And this is what Infernodus does very well. It compares what are the different relationships between ideas that are present in this case, in Jan Lecon's interview, but not in uh, Sam Altman interview with Lex Friedman. And then it builds a graph from that and uses graph science to visualize what are the main concepts inside based on uh, network theory and graph analysis algorithms. So for example, we see that the concept of system is much more relevant in uh, the interview of Jan Lecun than in the interview of Sam Altman. And this is because he's using this word a lot to connect different concepts together. So I understand that if I'm interested in thinking about systems and systems thinking and how systems work, how AI systems work, I'll probably find more interesting stuff in Jan Lecon's interview. What I can do next, and that's also another really powerful feature of Infernotus, that once I understand that a certain idea is present, I can select it and then hide it from the graph. And it's going to show me the context around this. So for example, I also see words like thing. It's probably like a parasite word a little bit because we use it a lot when we describe things, but that's maybe not so relevant. So 
Let's delete this and see what's hiding behind. Okay, so there we go to the details. For example, good representation. What is this about? Why is this relation so influential in the discourse of uh, Jan Likun and not in the discourse of Sam Altman? So when we click on those two terms, we can click here in the analytics panel and see what other ideas they're related to, right? So it says good representation, world, predict, image, language. Okay, so I understand that Jan Likun is talking about how models can have a good representation of the world and how it allows them to predict much better. I like to derive these interpretations myself just by looking at the graph, but what you can also do is to use the built-in AI module inside Infernodus and then you click on derive from this context, so it's going to use the actual interview and then click on generate an idea and then it's going to use GPT-4 to generate a response for you like what he's talking about in relation to this topic. And it's great because you know what question to ask. You're looking at the graph, you're noticing stuff that are really important because these are the things that make this interview different from the other one. So we already have this filter. Then we use uh, our own eyes and the uh, thing that we're very good at as people, which is pattern recognition. We find uh, some pattern of words uh, that we see comes up a lot. It means it's a recurrent one. If it's bigger on the graph, it means it's more relevant. And then we say like, okay, what, what does he say about this topic? And here we see an explanation generated by AI based on this context. And it says that training a system to learn good representations help produce better results in object recognition tasks than using generative model. Okay, so that's interesting. He's saying how how a good representation is actually making a huge difference uh, than just using a generative model. And by incorporating textual descriptions of images, supervising training yields improved performance. This method enhances the architecture's ability to understand and segment visual data effectively. It's a very interesting idea. I should explore it more. I should be listening to that when I'm listening to uh, the Jan Likon interview. So I'm gonna save it to the project notes as well. And also what's interesting here is that if I listen to Sam Altman's interview, I know that this is what's missing from there. And that's also really, really interesting because it allows me to much better understand uh, uh, what I should be looking for in, in that content and what he's not talking about. So for example, if I was an interviewer and I want to ask some follow-up questions, that would be really useful information to me because it would allow me to see uh, what else I can ask this guy, right? So then I can generate a few more responses because uh, there's much more stuff here. So for example, here it's also talking about how having good representation in AI involves training models on both image and video data. So he's also talking about how language is an important tool, but that we should also use other modalities of perception to train a model. We cannot represent everything with language. That's also a very interesting thought. I should also be aware of this when I'm listening to this interview. And uh, let's say more stuff, training a system to learn good representation of world through image, video. So it's the same thing. We're kind of done here with this particular relationship of concepts. So we can move on. That's great. I know that uh, that's what Jan Nikon is saying. He's really giving a lot of emphasis on the necessity of training a model, not only on language, but also on other modalities. Um, vision, perhaps we can even imagine some other ones like sound or can we represent a feeling, for example? That would be also something to explore. Then we have another relationship here, model. So if you click on model, you see all the words it's related to. By the way, it's not related to the world. It's because uh, both Sam Altman and uh, Jan Lecun, they, they speak about model and the world in the same context, because it's probably an expression they use, the model of the world. But what we see that model representation is a relation that's only used by Jan Likon, not by Sam Altman. So this is also something interesting to note, but uh, we already generated some ideas in relation to a similar topic of good representation, how a model can have a good representation and so on. So we can let go of that and move on. And what I like to do at this point is to slice off a top layer of the nodes uh, that I'm aware about. So I can either select them like I did before and remove them from the graph, or I can click this button and it kind of slices off the top obvious layer of concepts and then shows me what's hiding underneath. I can also manually remove words like this, kind, love, because uh, these are not so interesting. And this is the power of using a 
knowledge graph, by the way, because you really can use it as a tool to manipulate the knowledge and to play around with it a little bit. So um, it's something that you cannot really do with language that is chronologically represented. Here you have an overview of everything at once, and this allows you to see uh, how things are related to one another, discover patterns inside, and uh, get to the parts of the discourse and of the interview which are really highly relevant to you, right? So here we're also talking about language and answer. So why not go here and see actually the statements, the context where it was used. And this is the amazing thing about Infernodus uh, that you can actually click on this and you don't have to use the AI to generate a response. You can also say like, okay, show me the parts of the discourse which are talking about uh, language and answer in the same context. And then when you click here, it's going to open the interview. Oh, wow exactly at the part where okay. he's talking about what this concept. For that, the near future will, will say because yeah. a lot of people are working on yeah. uh, reasoning and planning abilities for, for dialogue systems. Um, I mean, if we're, even if we restrict ourselves to language, uh, just having the ability to plan your answer before you answer. Great. You see, so uh, he's mentioning these terms that we selected, language and answer. Here we go. And you jump exactly to the part of the interview where he's talking about those subjects. So it's also a very powerful way to get to the parts of the discourse in a non-linear way where you don't have to watch the whole thing, but you select what is there that's different from the other one, then you select the terms that you like, and then you jump to them directly to listen to what this person has to say about this, right? So that's also like a nice way to explore these ideas. By the way, I could also do the same, of course, with the ones we selected before, uh, but I just want to go through with the demonstration so I can show you all the different features. Okay, so once you did this, another really interesting thing that you can do is to actually get back all the nodes that you selected back into the graph. So we're just looking now at the differences of ideas. So by the way, here you can switch between just the interview of Lex Friedman, just the interview of Jan Lecun, or show me the difference, what is in Jan LeCun's interview that's not in uh, Sam Altman's one, right? And there, I also advise you to use another feature that Infernodus has, which is called blind spots. And what it does is based on these topics that it identified, artificial intelligence, machine learning, human potential, logical reasoning, it identifies the clusters of topics that could be better connected. So when you click highlight, it shows you what are those clusters, and then you can reiterate through them. And what I like is to find the ones that are furthest apart from each other because it means they're present in the same context, but they're not really related. Uh, so for example, here we have one on computational modeling and career evolution. So that's interesting. Like usually you will actually generate some really strange uh, stuff here, really strange connections because they will seem unrelated, but by making the relation with your imagination, you will be actually contributing to this discourse in an interesting way because you will be connecting ideas in a way they haven't been connected yet. And here we're kind of like on a double meta layer of making this connection because we're not just looking at the normal graph of the interview, we're looking at how the interview of Jan Lecon is different from the interview of Sam Altman, right? So uh, we're already on this level of, uh, of interpretation where we're looking at differences at the gap, but we're finding a gap inside that gap. So uh, what does Jan Lecon say that Sam Altman is not talking about? Uh, but what also he doesn't say that he could have been saying to connect those ideas in an interesting way, right? And then if we click derive from this context, we can generate an insight question, an interesting question that would help us uh, discover new ideas. So here it says, how can we leverage the concept of creating a change in job systems from years ago? Of course, it's an AI model, so it's trying to come up with, uh, with uh, ideas that contain all the terms, but uh, we can just remove this job systems to develop a model for predicting and planning future actions and energy sequences in smart AI training system. We can click elaborate and ask uh, the AI to answer this question. So that's a great because you're kind of generating the questions using the AI and then you use the AI to answer those questions. And once you get to the ideas you like, you can save them into your project notes and generate your own understanding of the discourse from that or uh, have a better awareness of the questions you need to have to approach this discourse and to listen to it carefully and to get to the stuff that you really like. So for example, here it says exploring ways to utilize the concept of organizational change from within job systems can provide valuable insights for constructing predictive models and planning future actions in AI framing 
focused on energy. Okay, let's generate more predictive capability. So that's interesting. Exploring the potential of incorporating principles of organizational change into AI training systems. So that's great because it's talking about implementing some some sort of logics into AI training systems that are present in human society to enhance their predictive capabilities and also optimize future energy sequences. I guess optimize future energy, optimize energy resources, for instance, which can be a really important subject because as we know, uh, those models use a lot of energy. So I will edit this answer and then I will add it to my notes and also be aware that I should be thinking in this direction and uh, try to also ask this question, how, how can we incorporate our knowledge of organizations into AI training? Like maybe we need to feed also not only language, but some kind of data relationships and organizational structures, hierarchies, uh, not only of thinking, but only also of how people organize themselves. And, and then based on that, uh, we will generate better AI models. So this is another interesting idea I will have in mind when I'm analyzing these interviews and when I'm listening to them. Okay, so this is how you look at the structural gaps and identify some interesting ideas here. By the way, you could also have Infranodus uh, show you only the words that are missing from the interview. So you go to the differences again, uh, and then you say, okay, show me only the words that Jan Lecon is using, but uh, that are not used by Lex Friedman. And here you have much less words. So for example, abstract representation is not so much present in uh, Sam Altman's interview, but that's great because it gets you to the stuff that are really, really specific, that are really specific to Jan Lecon's interview. And if you click here, abstract representation, then you can see the part of the interview where he's talking about that. Talk about language, and if you just take language directly, that presumably is not good. So there has to be some kind of abstract representation of ideas. Yeah, so you, I mean, you can do this with language directly. So you see, uh, Lex is asking a question about abstract representation in this interview, uh, which, if it's an interesting topic to us, we could explore further by either watching the interview or analyzing the context around it. So we can get back to the missing relations view by clicking this button, zoom out, and then one last thing I want to show you is that you can actually do this analysis in reverse. So now we were analyzing how Lex Lecon interview is different from Sam Altman. We understood that it's a lot more technical. They're talking about various representational models that um, AI systems can have, how we should go beyond language and use other modalities, not only vision, uh, but also perhaps uh, some knowledge about how organizations are structured, business processes, data, uh, hierarchical logics of thinking and so on. So he's talking much more about this technical stuff. But now we can reverse this comparison and actually if we, if we click this button here, then we'll see exactly the same thing, but in reverse. So what Lex Friedman is, uh, what Sam Altman is talking about uh, with Lex Friedman that um, Jan Lecun is not mentioning. And here we see that he's talking much more about people. So that's interesting. And human and time. So it's probably more about the, the board also, you see. So he's talking about the sort of um, human resource aspect of running an AI organization, right? And we can actually remove those terms because uh, even the word system is not really connected to a lot here. So let's remove those and see what else is hiding there. So people, also let's get rid of those two. And then we see the context around those. So what's interesting here is that what comes up in this pink cluster is are the ideas about uh, how to work together with humans important. So we can click those and see uh, in which context it was used. So here he's talking about Jeff Bezos, for instance, uh, and how, uh, how he's talking about Elon Musk and so on. So he's working, he, he's talking about working with different people and also his relationships to different people in this case. And then if we go here, we see the board and he's probably talking more about uh, how it worked out with the board and so on. So we understand that the Sam Altman interview is much more focused on the human aspect of running an AI organization. And that can also be an interesting insight for us to know when we're listening to that interview. For instance, for me, that will be not so interesting uh, at this point, I'm much more into the technical details. I'm probably going to watch Jan Lecun's interview and I will watch it with these questions that I generated uh, using Infranodus in this case.
So one last thing that I would like to point out is that if you're interested in uh, analyzing this content on a higher level, kind of in a more general sense, what you can also do is that when you import the graph of ideas, uh, how I did in this case, I'm copying and pasting the link to the interview. What you can do here is that you ask in front of us not to analyze the words in the text, but to only analyze detected entities. So the knowledge graph that you're going to build is going to be uh, more sparse and it will contain less words and more ideas and the relations between the ideas. It will also take longer to process because of that, because um, it takes some time obviously to extract all this data. And uh, that can be useful if you are kind of like wanting to see the content on a more higher level, right? So uh, here I see that they're talking about language, information, open source, AI, and so on, right? And if I generate uh, the names for the topics, I see that actually some other clusters come up when I'm thinking about this interview on this more conceptual level. For example, there's this whole cluster on AI ethics. Uh, so we see that they're talking about open source models and how it's important to open source models because uh, it's probably better for uh, humanity in the long run. And this is good that I have this because I kind of uh, mentioned it in my first analysis, but I missed it out. So now I'm going to add also this idea to my expectations of what I get from this interview and point attention to that as well. And also I see here that they're talking about space reasoning, which is also really interesting because uh, I understand the, what other modalities they're talking about and how he's saying that, okay, you don't only use language, but you also use uh, language uh, image learning, but you also need to develop some sort of spatial reasoning for the model so that it can recognize objects and relations between them. So it gives me a much more specific understanding of this particular interview. So that's also something important. I advise you to do that. Once you analyze it on a granular level, you can go into the conceptual level or vice versa, you can analyze uh, on the level of uh, entities. Uh, so kind of like a more zoomed out view on the main concepts and then you can zoom into the specifics and analyze it like this. So this is just one trick to have that you can use when you analyze this data. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please let me know what you think about in the comments to this video. Also subscribe to our channel so that you get informed when the new videos are out. And if you want to try this out, you can do this on infranotus.com with uh, any video that you like or any transcribed text. Thank you very much.